Wesley, it's still your move. I'm still thinking. Has it anything to do with checkers? They have. How do you think I look? Groovy? You really think so? Yeah, sure. Gosh, I didn't know kids still use that word. We don't. I heard it once in a documentary. Well, Mrs. Owens, joining the mod squad? <laughs> Today's the anniversary of Mom and Dad's first date ever. You know, way back in the 60s. Oh. Yeah, we're going back to the first place we ever went together, this little coffee house in Altoona. And I thought it would be fun if we dressed up for the occasion. Mm, sounds kicky. <laughs> <laughs> you're fired then I better go but I think you look just as handsome as you did that first night you showed up on my father's doorstep he couldn't stop laughing either <laughs> well I think you guys look neat thank you honey sort of like the Jetsons That's a come on George it'll be romantic we'll have espresso okay Okay. I just hope this place is dark and empty. I've heard most of Altoona's like that. Let's go. Have a boss time. Hey, where's Mom and Dad? Uh, they just left. Come on, Ken. Mom says you gotta drop me and Angela off at the movies. Ah, oh, fine. Well, where's the... It looks like it's just you and me. Shall we finish the game? Or would you like to surrender now? I gotta go. Where? I'm camping out in Ricky Rondinella's backyard. All right. Hey, what are you gonna do? Oh, I don't know. Just relax. Maybe read a book. Another one? I think you read too much. <laughs> I think you ought to run along, Wesley. Hey, you can camp out with us if you want. I think our tent's big enough. <laughs> go. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Baby's right. I do read too much. <laughs> Streaks on the china never mattered before. Who cared? When you drop kicked your jacket as you came through the door. No one glares, but sometimes things get turned around and no one spared. All hands look out below, there's a change in the status quo. Oh, oh, gonna need all the help that we can get. According to our new arrival, life is more than mere survival. We just might live the good life yet. Good morning, Wesley. Are you still mad about having to pick me up last night? I didn't want to talk about it. Oh, come on, Mr. Belvedere. It wasn't my fault. Mrs. Rondinella said we could build a campfire. I don't think she meant in the middle of the den. <laughs> it was cold outside. Besides, Ricky's the one who started throwing the flaming marshmallows. Well, just shut up and eat. Hey, you burnt my toast. I just assumed you'd like it that way. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Kevin. How was your date last night? Ah, uh, it was okay. Just okay? While straightening up, I found these. They were stuffed between the cushions of the living room couch. I thought perhaps they might belong to your date. Not my date. I couldn't even get her coat off. <laughs> oh, there they are. Thank you, Miss Belvedere. Wesley, how was your little camp out, honey? Great, Mom. I never had oxygen before. <laughs> okay, anybody want to go shop with your mom and me? We're going to Lumberama. I'll pass. I'll go. Come on, Mr. Belvedere. You can come, too. We can play with the power tools. Sounds tempting, Wesley, but Mr. Belvedere has beds to make. Have fun. 
So, are you coming, Wes? No, I think I'll just stick around here. Up to you. Come on, honey. Okay, see you later. We gotta help Mr. Belvedere. What do you mean? He's lonely. I mean, we're always going places, always doing stuff. But all Mr. Belvedere ever does is stay home by himself. He likes being alone. Well, I think it's finally getting to him. I mean, he still yells at me when I do something wrong, but he doesn't seem to enjoy it as much. <laughs> Come to think of it, he does seem a little edgy lately. So what are we gonna do? Hey, Wes, you know what I think Mr. Belvedere really needs? A dog? <laughs> a woman. Where are we gonna get one of those? <laughs> Dad, I want you to see this. Look what I got. <laughs> you get them? I found them at church. They were coming out of bingo. Aww. Excuse me, are you the nurse? Huh? The little boy promises a free blood pressure test. I'm sorry, there's been a mistake. You all are gonna have to leave. Hey, what are you doing? We're all gonna have to go now. But we just sat down. Sorry, yeah, the clinic's closed. Closed? Uh, there's been a bomb scare. A bomb? Oh, my God! <laughs> Can I use your bathroom? That's where the bomb is. Ah! 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 <laughs> what did you do that for? Wesley, are you nuts? You are not going to find someone for Mr. Belvedere by dragging in old ladies off the street. <laughs> the young ones wouldn't come. <laughs> Besides, how else are we going to do it? With this. I picked it up at the mall today. What is it? It's a questionnaire from this computer dating place. Pick your perfect mate scientifically. See, all we gotta do is have Mr. Belvedere answer these questions, and the computer will find him the perfect woman. Oh, boy, let's go have him fill it out right now. Oh, uh, Wesley, Wesley, Wesley. We can't just ask him straight out. We gotta be sneaky. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> hey, Mr. Belvedere. Hello, Wesley. Anyway, I was just wondering... Mm-hmm. If you were stranded on a desert island, who's the one person you'd most want to be stranded with? And you can't say me. Wesley, if I couldn't be with you, I'd just as soon go down with the ship. Oh, uh, and I was also wondering, do you think love and commitment should precede sexual intimacy, or is physical gratification an end unto itself? <laughs> What have you got there, Wesley? Nothing. I mean, it's just something for school. Who's school? Masters and Johnsons? I ain't got it. Go now, Mr. Melvier. Bye. What you doing, Wes? Finishing up my mural for the open house at school. Oh. Oh, gee. Uh, honey, you want to come take a look at this? What exactly is it, Wes? It looks a little grisly. It's my history of punishment in colonial America. I kind of wondered why that lady was on fire. Oh, she's a witch. And this guy got drunk, so he's in the pillory. And he's getting tarred and feathered because he liked the English. And she's getting dunked for fooling around while her husband was away. Well, honey, this is all very colorful. But um, I thought you said you were going to paint Betsy Ross sewing the American flag. I did. That's her down there with her feet chained together. Well, at least her hands are free. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Ugh, you're still doing that? Hey, what'd they tell you at the computer dating place? Forget it. They said they got nobody with Mr. Belvedere's interests. You're telling me there's nobody out there who likes opera and eats corn dogs? <laughs> hey, Wes, what about your open house? Huh? Well, there's gonna be a lot of women there. Oh, yeah. All my friends' mothers. And most of them are divorced and real desperate. Hello, children. Hi, Mr. Belvedere. Hey, Mr. Belvedere. Wesley, how's your salute to cruelty coming along? Great. And you can see it all going up when you come to my open house at school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the last time I went anywhere where people knew you, I barely got out alive. That was just church. This is different. <laughs> Yeah, well, anyway, here's my classroom where I do everything. Fine. Just remember to introduce Mr. Belvedere the way he told you to. I will. Oh, hi, Wesley. Hey, Ricky. 
Piedmont, remember Wesley? Yes, from the fire. <laughs> anyway, Mrs. Rondi and Ella, this is Mr. Belvedere. He's no blood relation, is not responsible for my actions, and doesn't particularly care for me. <laughs> okay? Thank you. Anyway, I'll leave you two alone. Come on, Ricky. <laughs> well, is uh, Mr. Rondinella here? He turned 40 and moved to California. <laughs> well, perhaps when he turns 50, he'll move back. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, what happened? Wesley, don't ever leave me alone like that again. But you're supposed to meet people and mingle. Wesley, this is an open house, not a cocktail party. <laughs> Hey, let's go over there and talk to Patty Kiefer's mom. I think she's giving you the eye. What are you talking about, Wesley? Nothing. Wesley, what are you up to? I just figured it'd be nice for you to get out and meet some people. That way you wouldn't be stuck home without a date on Saturday night. Wesley, that's really very sweet of you. But it's quite unnecessary. Now, can we go? Okay. I just got to get something out of my locker first. Be right back. Don't dawdle. What goes through a child's mind? <laughs> Compelling, isn't it? I want to stop looking, but I can't. Sort of like a traffic accident. <laughs> Which one is yours? The one who did this. Wesley! You're not his father. No, I'm a sort of a temporary guardian. His parents couldn't come. Uh, I guess they needed the rest. You seem to know Wesley quite well. <laughs> oh. Hello, Wesley. Good evening, Mrs. Carsola. What are you talking to her for? She seems very nice. She's not nice. She's my teacher. She's always giving me a hard time. I knew there was a reason I liked her. that whole carton of chocolate milk of all the classrooms and all the schools and all the world Mr. Belvedere had to walk into mine <laughs> you ought to be happy we wanted him to meet somebody Mrs. Carsol is not somebody she's my teacher well what's wrong with that teachers aren't supposed to go out it's unnatural <laughs> come on kids let's finish clearing the table but that's Mr. Belvedere's job. Wes, you know Mr. Belvedere's getting ready for his date. Well, I still don't understand why you and Dad are letting him go out on a school night. <laughs> Wes, Mr. Belvedere is a grown man. He doesn't need our permission or our advice. You decent? For the time being. I brought you a little something might help you out tonight. Oh? You give this to Miss Crabtree, she may keep you after school. That's too cheap and everything. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> so I guess you're getting a little nervous, huh? Not at all. If you want, I'd be happy to give you a few uh, pointers. If we were going bowling, I would be happy to ask. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're stuck with the opera. Oh. Anyway, I got one thing I know you need. <laughs> She's picking me up. Oh, is she paying for you too? They usually insist. I'll get it. Good evening, Wesley. This is Carsola. What are you doing here? I'm picking up Mr. Belvedere. Wait here. I'll get him. <laughs> Wesley. <laughs> Mrs. Carsola, I'm so sorry. Won't you please come in? Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what's gotten into Wesley. He's usually so polite. I'm his teacher, dear. Don't con me. <laughs> Mrs. Carsola, you remember my husband, George? Uh, yes, we met after Wesley's little incident at the Natural History Museum. Hey, if I told that kid once, I told him a thousand times, don't lean against the dinosaurs. <laughs> I uh, want to apologize for raising my voice at our meeting. It's just... I got a little upset reliving it. We understand. <laughs> and I'm sorry I had to slap you. That's okay. Hello, Isabel. Oh, all set, Lynn. Ready when you are. Have a nice time. Oh, Wesley, have you shown your parents that spelling test? 
No. Wesley? And O spells no. Wesley! <laughs> hey, come on, one at a time. <laughs> you just march yourself right upstairs, young man, and bring us back that test. Okay. Come along, Isabel. We don't want to miss the opening aria. Do we still have time to stop and pick up a couple of corn dogs? Mm -hmm. There's always time for corn dogs. <laughs> this is a nightmare. <laughs> Well, thanks for walking me to the door. It's the least I could do. Aren't you going to invite me in? I spent a lot of money tonight. Isabel, I've had a lovely time. Please don't ruin it. <laughs> Come on in, I'll make us both some coffee. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> Wesley. We will discuss this in the morning. <laughs> Oh, boy, chocolate chip cookies. Hey, whoa. They're not for you. They are for Isabel and me. You're taking her out again? Mm-hmm. We're going to a little indoor picnic at the art museum. I'm bringing the dessert, and Isabel is bringing the wine and cold chicken. But it's your day off. We always do something together on your day off. I know. That's why it seems that I never have one. <laughs> oh, come on, Wesley. I'll be home early this evening. Perhaps we can do something together then. Yeah, sure. Don't you have an essay you should be working on? Man, does she have to tell you everything? You can have one if you like. I don't want one anymore. Don't talk to me. I wasn't. This is all your fault. Bye. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Heather. Hey, Wes. I got a problem. Oh, yeah? What? What do you do when someone you really like starts liking somebody else instead? Oh? Uh, does my little brother have a crush on somebody? Huh? No! I'm talking about Mr. Belvedere, my stupid teacher. They've been going out every day for the past two weeks. So? So next thing you know, he'll ask her to move in with him. Then they'll probably want my room, because I've got the bunk beds. Right, Wes. <laughs> I emptied all the trash. Fine. Now you can start on the erasers. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I meant outside. It's cold outside. Maybe you should have thought of that before you put the chewing gum in Henrietta Huffnagel's hair. You told me to get rid of it. Out. Hello, everyone. Oh, hello, Lynn. Hey, what are you doing here? I believe Mrs. Carcella wanted to talk to me. Hey, when I'm bad, you're supposed to call my mom, not your boyfriend. Where's me? Sorry. <laughs> Apparently, Mrs. Carcello received a very disturbing letter. Yes, this came today. I found it in my box in the school office. The man who calls himself Lynn Belvedere is not what you think. He has a wife in England and about eight kids <laughs> who are all looking for him. Stop seeing him for your own good. Sincerely, the informer. P.S. He's wanted in three states. Actually, it's four. What kind of twisted mind would write something like that? Perhaps the same one that could write something like this. Hey, it's my essay. What are you doing with that? I haven't even turned it in yet. I thought perhaps you'd like to read it in front of the class. What class? There's nobody here. We're here. Go ahead, Wesley. Why Helping People Stinks by Wesley T. Owens. <laughs> a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, there was a guy who couldn't get a date on Saturday night. So his best little friend in the entire universe fixed him up with a womanoid from Planet Bimbo. <laughs> and they fell in love and got married and moved to another solar system. So now the little friend is all alone and drifting aimlessly through space, all because he was a jerk and tried to do something nice the end. It's very nice, Wesley. Yes, it's a very imaginative story. It's not just a story. 
It isn't. It's about us. It is. Man, what does it take to get through to you people? <laughs> Wesley, Mr. Belvedere and I are not getting married. You aren't? Just because two people enjoy each other's company, it doesn't mean they're going to rush off together to the planet Zongo. So you guys are in love? Wesley, of course not. Yes, of course not. And you're never going to leave? Of course I am. Huh? What I mean is, it may not be tomorrow, or it may not even be next year, but someday, when I think you're sufficiently civilized and no longer a threat to society, <laughs> then I'll be on my way. Boy, that could take forever! <laughs> Don't remind me. Hey, Mr. Belvedere, got another hot date with Mrs. Carsola? Mm. Your brother and sister are making me take them to the drive-in. So you're stuck with a wagon, huh? I don't mind. When your brother misbehaves, I can make him sit in the back and face the wrong way. <laughs> Come on, Marshall, we're gonna be late. You're just doing this to get back at me. Come on, honey, it'll be fun. All right, all right. <laughs> are you sure everybody's gonna be wearing stuff like this? Sure they are. Come on, we don't want to miss the first dance. Hey, swing your lady just like Cupid. Swing her again. Don't she look stupid? <laughs> Wesley seems to have reconciled himself to Isabel and me seeing each other from time to time. In fact, he's even threatened to come along on one of our picnics. Speaking of Isabel, she keeps suggesting we spend the weekend together in Atlantic City. Her treat? I may be old-fashioned, but I think she should take me to Monte Carlo. 